This 3D stuff, man, not gonna lie, I think a lot of people are gonna have fun with it. Alright, it's that time of the year again. Procreate is blessing us with yet another awesome update. The biggest one in a while, to be honest, and it's also crazy to think that 2022 is just around the corner. Now, before we start, here are all the specs you need. I'm using Procreate Beta 2 with the iPad Pro 11 inch 2018 model, second gen Apple Pencil, and everything is running on iPad OS 15. As I already showed you in the beginning, we will be talking about the 3D stuff. I know this is sort of the hot new feature, but I'm also happy to inform that there are things included for those of you who have iPads that aren't able to run everything smoothly, or for those of you who are just less interested in this 3D functionality. So make sure to stick around until the end. So here we are, the main gallery view that is now filled with these 3D models, which I downloaded earlier. And once we dive into one of those, you can see layout wise, not a lot has changed. We still have the layers panel, which categorizes each part. In this case, we have the lid, the tap, and of course the can itself. Now let's just go ahead and tap the base layer of the can and add another layer on top. So what we can do is we can decide to paint it with a brush we are all familiar with, or we can just color drop just like we would in a 2D environment. Also, check out all the details you can see here. It's super realistic and there's something so satisfying to just spin around this can model. Now this is a calligraphy channel, so of course we're going to add some calligraphy to our can. I don't know, maybe Malibu because that's what I wrote in my Instagram video. Kind of feeling tropical, but <laughs> yeah, I already could see the potential of this 3D stuff. It's great to just get a sense of your design in real time, for example. The next thing we can do is we can go to action and here you'll find a new 3D section with a bunch of new options including edit and environment. And as you might have guessed, this is the area where you can freely manipulate the light and surroundings of the 3D model. We have these light cubes which you can add or remove, change the hue, saturation and intensity of the lights. It's really great and you can honestly spend so much time on this. Uh, you can also enable or disable the environment. So many options and we're only on beta 2 so it's just going to get even better from here. Now, you might have seen this little view in AR button, and if we click that, you'll be able to see, well, first of all, a messy desk, but you'll also be able to see this can in AR, augmented reality. I now have this Malibu can right in front of me, so yeah, this, this 3D stuff, man, not gonna lie, I think a lot of people are gonna have fun with it. That concludes everything revolving around 3D for now. Again, this is just a first look. Full review will be out by the time this update is officially announced. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to be among the first to see that. And next, as promised, all the features that are not really dependent on performance. First up, size increments, aka brush size memory. And this feature essentially allows you to save size and opacity settings. So if you have a brush that you say only use it 10 or 50%, you can set these benchmarks by tapping the plus icon. And if you want to remove them, just simply tap the minus icon and there you go, it's gone. Super easy to use and I'm very happy it's here. Next up, we have material brushes. So in the brush studio, we now have this new section called materials and this allows you to add metallic as well as roughness values to your brush. These effects will only be visible on 3D models and you'll also be able to customize the source material. Now, you may have noticed there's another section that's new called stabilization. And yeah, this one focuses on stabilizing and smoothing out the brush, which is why the streamline feature has moved to this part as well. I'd have to do more extensive testing, but I'm confident this will result in the creation of the next gen Procreate brushes. Definitely more on that in the future. Then we have page assist, basically another view for the layers panel. You can have them up at all times now. You can also now pin your favorite brushes in the new recent brush category, which will always be on top of your list. It's up to eight brushes by default, and I don't think you can change that. Color cards, a bigger view of your colors. You can rearrange them and also rename your favorite colors. And last but certainly not least, single touch gestures. For this one, you go to settings, to your actual iPad settings, and once you enable that, you will find this assist panel floating around, and with this, you can perform basic gestures with only one finger. It's pretty convenient, especially for those who hate zooming in with two fingers. And that about wraps it up. I know I didn't go into too much detail and I didn't cover everything. For example, I believe for the M1 iPads, there's like four times better performance. You can now have over 900 layers on HD settings. But nonetheless, it's great I get to share some of the beta fun with you and I honestly miss doing that. It's been a crazy year, learned a lot about myself and yeah, I guess I'm just happy to create videos again. That being said, feel free to subscribe if you're interested in Procreate or Calligraphy content. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.